Ooh, she is tired. Hi y'all. So a few months ago in November of 2020, I set myself a challenge to write 30 songs in the 30 days of November. And after I finished it, I asked a bunch of you if you would like me to talk about it at all. And you said yes, and you asked me some questions. So here I'm going to answer your questions and hopefully give you a little more insight into what the challenge was like for me. And if you are a songwriter, maybe give you a few tips. I just wanna preface this by saying everything I say is my process and what works for me. And it's also important for me to note that I set myself this challenge partly because I've been unemployed for months because of the pandemic. And I don't know if I would have had the mental wherewithal to do this challenge if I hadn't had that time. So take everything with a grain of salt. What works for you is what works for you. I wrote down your questions because I'm trying to be organized. I think I'll start with what's your writing routine? So again, this is what works for me. That month, I happened to be doing a book called The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron. And one of Julia Cameron's main tools is something called morning pages. Morning pages are basically three long form pages that you write as soon as you wake up, kind of no filter, just getting your brain out onto the page. So generally I would start my morning with that, get up, write the three pages, go about my morning. And then in terms of my routine actually writing, Usually I will start by looking through my voice memos and lyric snippets that I have on my phone. So I keep a lot of lyric snippets in my notes app and a lot of progressions, chords, melodies, things like that, ideas in my voice memos. I will say every song starts differently. Some songs start with a progression and then I layer on top of that. Some songs I pull a melody first and work with that and write on it. Some I have a lyric that I want to write into something so I find a melody for it. Every song is different. I got a couple of questions about motivation and burnout, understandably, because it's writing a song a day for 30 days. Uh, so someone asked, how were you able to motivate yourself every day? It was hard some days, I'm not gonna lie. Sometimes the urge to write was there where I knew exactly what I wanted to write about and sometimes it was a real struggle to really tease something out and make it into a complete song by the end of the day. Part of the reason I started the challenge is because I know one of my weaknesses is consistency. And I wanted to see how consistent I could be over the course of this challenge. So for me, it was a question of accountability where I had basically promised you on social media that I would share these snippets every day. So I had to, like, you know, it was kind of a deadline I had set for myself every day. So that was helpful. I work well with deadlines. The other side of that question was, did you ever feel burnt out? Out and how did you push through it? I definitely had times where I felt starved for motivation or it, like it was harder some days than others. I also wanna be honest with you, the month I was doing this challenge was one of the worst for my anxiety pretty much ever. My physical symptoms got really bad. I was not sleeping very well. My eating habits were all over the place. As glad as I am that I did the challenge, yeah, I definitely felt burnt out in some ways. In terms of pushing through it, I think it's not about pushing through it. I think it's about taking a rest and slowing down for a minute. So everyone has different mechanisms. For me, I would step away from screens for a little bit or step away from the song, make something to eat, watch an episode of something that I really like, spend some time with my partner. It's different for everyone, but I would say if you get to that point of burnout, it's good to take a step back and do something completely different from what you've been doing because it just kind of resets your brain. Hot showers are great for that. Another question was, how did you come up with so many melodies? This is kind of a hard question to answer because melody to me is one of those things that kind of just happens. Not that I don't have to work at it, but it depends on where I'm starting the song. So sometimes I have a melody already in my voice memos that I came up with a while ago. Sometimes literally this would happen where I would be like, okay, I want to write a pop song today. What's a pop like melody? And I would start thinking about that and thinking about what kinds of runs work for that genre and start with a melody and then start building around it. Sometimes I would start with a chord progression on guitar and start humming on top of it to find a melody. So once again, it's one of those things that it really depends on where the song starts. I think I definitely struggled sometimes with finding new melodies. That's where voice memos and old ideas can be really helpful. Someone asked, how overwhelming was it on a scale of 1 to 10? I would say most of the time it was around an 8 or a 9. Again, my goal was consistency over the month, but having that daily deadline, while it was good for me, was also stressful because I was like, I have to have a song by the end of the day. So it was definitely overwhelming. What I keep saying to people is the circumstances were right for me to do this challenge at this time. I don't know if it would have worked as well at a different point in my life. So these next two questions kind of go together. Which song took the longest to write? 
So I actually had to go back in my drafts to see which song was kind of recorded at the latest point in the day. It ended up being Bad Timing, which was the song on day 19. I don't think it was anything about the song in particular. I think it was that I was hitting the point two and a half weeks in where my motivation was starting to falter a little bit and it was getting harder for me to do the daily routine of writing and recording and posting. Someone else asked which song was the hardest to write. I took it to mean the hardest emotionally or it was the hardest to put together. And I actually have three of these. The first one is Hotel Alexander, which I think was day 13. That one was difficult because I was basically compressing this very intense experience with a lot of nuance to it into a song, which I think is really hard because a song is a very specific form and format, and you're just squeezing so much of your experience into it in so few words. The second one was Element of Surprise, which was day 29, I think. It was the only proper love song I wrote all month. When I say that one was hard to write, I don't mean because it was a love song. I think songs that are about harder feelings like anxiety or missing someone or, you know, feeling really low are easier for me to write about because I know that someone will relate to them. I know that it will make someone feel less alone. And not that love songs can't do that, but those feelings and those experiences almost feel more private to me, like they're more mine. But it worked out, we got a love song out of it, so challenge accepted, challenge fulfilled. The third one was Christmas Will Work It Out. I had wanted to write a Christmas song for this challenge, and I knew it was gonna be hard because it's really hard to write a good original Christmas song. It was one of the harder days of the challenge, which was great because it was the last one, but I think I came out of it with something that felt real and felt like it was from my perspective, and I really enjoy it. Okay. A few people asked me about favorites or top songs that I wrote. I am really bad at favorites. It's really tough for me to narrow things down. But I did manage to pick out five songs that stood out to me over the course of the challenge. The first one is Eden Abandoned, which was day three. Eden Abandoned was a song where I really tried to take a broader perspective and not just write from my intimate experience because I tend to write from my very specific circumstances and I wanted to broaden it out a little bit to encompass the experiences of people over the course of this year. I came out with some really good lines that I really love, most notably the title couplet, which is, when we abandon Eden, there must have been a reason. The second one is Dans l'ombre, which is a French sort of techno-y pop song I ended up writing around day eight or nine. If you don't know already, I'm bilingual, I'm half French, and I've wanted to write in French for a long time. My mother has asked me to write songs in French for a long time, but I always felt a huge pressure because having grown up in the US, even bilingual, I know that I have less vocabulary in French, so it was always really daunting. But I really like this song. I think I came out with something really fun and still kind of in my Lane. The third song is Made of Stone, which is day 11. Made of Stone was a song I wrote about Medusa, the Greek mythological figure who has snakes for hair and turns people to stone by looking at them. The most common version of her myth has her basically being murdered by Perseus, who's a hero, and it's seen as a good thing. I don't want to go into too much detail for trigger reasons, um, but if you look up Ovid's version of Medusa's myth, it's a lot darker and it gives a lot more backstory on how she became a Gorgon, which is to say snake hair. I'm really proud of that song because first of all, I'm a little bit of a myth geek. And second, I think it really fleshed out her perspective and turned the tables on that slightly misogynistic myth in a way that I found really interesting. The fourth song is Emmeline, which was day 18. Emmeline is a story song. It's from one perspective, but it tells the story of someone else. And I think it's really relatable because it's from the point of view of one woman talking about another woman that she really admires and their adventures in the city together and why one of them eventually left. It's one of my favorites because I think it carries out that saying of, you know, make the kind of art you want to see. And Emmeline to me is one of the kinds of songs that I want to listen to. It was tough for the last spot, but number five is Don't Wanna Go, which I think was day 25. Don't Wanna Go is very unlike a lot of stuff I've written before. It was a very fun kind of pop driven, guitar driven song. A lot of distortion, things like that. I like it because the melody and the tempo were really fun and upbeat, which I don't do a lot. The chorus is also really simple and fun in that it really just says, 
I don't want to go. It's kind of like that childish need we feel to like figure it out on our own and just be annoyed and sad in our corner. And I feel like it was a, just a fun way to get those feelings out in a way that was a little bit dancey. Those are all the specific questions. What I want to leave you with is I'm glad I did it. I don't regret it. I wouldn't take it back because it really showed me what I was capable of. And I think we all need reminders of that once in a while. I don't know if I would necessarily do it again because like I said, it took a lot out of me. It made me super anxious. It messed up my sleep schedule. I think my goal of being consistent definitely panned out because even on the few days when I didn't finish a song completely, I had most of a song and I knew that I could go back and work with it and finish it. And at the end, you know, I had basically 30 or so song babies that I can further develop and work with until they become something that I'm really proud of. A few people have asked me if I have any plans to share the songs that I wrote in November. What I would say to that is they all need a little bit of development first. I definitely have plans to share them in the future. It just may be a little while, but keep an eye out you will hear about that. The other thing I want to share with you, if you don't already know, is that I do have new music coming out this year. It's not related to the songs I wrote in November because these songs have been in production since before the pandemic and that put a huge hold on them and that's why they've taken this long. Most notably, I have my first single in a few years coming out on March 5th. It's called In This Body. I'm really proud of it. I think it's one of the best things I've ever written to be honest. It would mean a lot if you pre-saved the song before it comes out. Pre-saves help independent artists like me get a little more attention from the algorithms that are huge and all-encompassing, and it gives us a better chance to get seen by people who can basically give our songs a little bit of a boost. And if you want to hear more about the songs that are coming this year before anybody else, I highly recommend signing up to my email list, which I will put down in the description along with the pre-save link. And I really just want to thank all of you for the support you showed me all through November and that challenge because it was very difficult to get through some days and your support on those little snippets that I was posting and your encouragement really made it worthwhile. It really means a lot to share snippets like that with you and to hear that you like them and that they resonate with you. So keep letting me know. Stay tuned for a lot more coming this year and I will talk to you soon.